All right, let's take a look at this real quick. I want to show you guys um, what this chart. Gerald, did you send this out yesterday? Did everybody get this yesterday in their, in their mailboxes? You should have got this chart. Okay, so let me explain what I'm talking about here. Hey, thanks, Gerald. So everybody should got this in their mailboxes yesterday. So um, if not, Gerald sent it out uh, this morning. If you did not send it out yesterday, it sounds like some of you got it, some of you didn't. But let's let's go over the uh, uh, the chart. So these uh, when I talk about order blocks, what are order blocks and what are supply demand lines? Some traders call them um, demand lines. Some call them order blocks. Uh, simply, an order block is where you have a bunch of, uh, it's an area where there's a bunch of big institutions, let's say banks or hedges or what have you, where they want to enter a big position at a certain area. So let's say this area is at this level back here, what have you. Well, they can't order, uh, they, they can't position themselves all at once at the same spot or same area or price or just will accelerate to the downside, right? So you'd have a big giant gap in the market to the downside. So th th they cannot buy or sell the entire quantity in one order. So what they do is they, they, they use it in blocks, what's called order blocks, or they, they buy and sell in blocks. Well, by buying and selling in blocks, what happens is you get and the, you get uh, um, these major support and resistance levels where they can sell some in blocks. When they retest that area, they can sell some more in blocks. So what these lines do, they represent uh, these order blocks or supply demand lines. Because what they are, they're basically levels of accumulation distribution in the past where you had large orders of selling or buying and you get a big level like that where you get a big level of selling if you retest that level then that's where they can fill more the the rest of their their contracts or the rest of their quantity or what have you so it's a way that it shows you where the you get uh, a major support and resistance to the market so these lines were specifically designed for Renko bars. You, what you want to do is you want to go 10 days back. This is the 12020. I have a 10 days back. If you want to match my lines in the room. So if you don't watch match the supply demand lines or uh, you know, basically they're the order block levels where you get a lot of selling at that level or buying at that level. That's why they're called supply demand. So if you do see those come up, this is called a fresh order block or supply. That had a lot of selling going on. So that line was drawn in automatically at the close. So you had a lot of selling pressure at the close the day before. Right? They're trying to sell the market, get short the market. So when they retest that level, this was a retest of the not only the supply line or the order block, it was a retest of the it was a retest of the supply line. So what's really neat about this is that you can find levels in the market that have holes in the market between order blocks or supply and demand. So when we see that, when we see these levels, these big gaps in the market, that means there's no previous, according to this indicator, there's no previous level of where the market was really had a big area of sell or buy orders. Basically, when these uh, lines come up, it's because of a higher time frame that I have built in. So let's say you have a big move down the market on a 5, 30 minute, 60 minute chart, whatever. If you have three lower lows, that is considered 
big selling pressure. They're trying to go vertical in the market to the downside. Whatever that candle was before, a small candle, that's your order block. So a line would be formed here. So when the market comes up and retests this level, this is where you'd want to sell the market for continuation. Because if they cannot get filled here, the big institutions, hedges, algorithms, what have you, they can't get filled here, right? Because they can't fill all their orders at once. Because the market just drop, drop, drop. They do get a big quantity short. Then you get the natural retest, you get the continuation. And that's what happened yesterday. You had a big order block there that formed a lot of big selling. That fresh one formed. I like fresh supply demands. So that, you, you guys have this on your the software that we sent out to you. I just want to show you how to use it correctly. You should skinny it down, and we'll look at this morning and all week this week and try to find these gaps in the market. I did it last week, last Wednesday. I said if we break 404, we got a big giant run to 48. And it was a 44, what, point upside, I believe it was. And it, it, it broke, retested on that order blocker and right to it. It actually exceeded it. Same thing, when you get these the form, look for the big gaps. These are the big gaps. So here's another big level where there's no support yesterday also. So if you skinny it down, it just lets you know when there's big gaps in the market. Now, why is that relevant to, to bear momentum shorts or FZR trades? Because if I have no support below me between supply demand, then if I get any type of momentum short, right? Now, bear lines, you can customize your bull bear lines down here. All right? You can customize the bull bear lines. Jiro has a program now in his hands, so he's going to slowly try to wrap this thing for you guys on the update. So you can customize this bull bear line. Here's your bear. There's your bull. So your bear right now, it says anything below 65 in this oscillator with the red zone. If the zones are red, then that means you're in a downtrend. And if the oscillator is below 65, then that tells you that you have a momentum short. If you turn green bars back to red bars. So if you have an oscillator that's extreme bear, even below, this is below 20, extreme bear, that's where the arrow fired. I got these arrows firing at extreme levels. This arrow fired automatically in your indicator yesterday. This fired automatically. This one fired. This fired, this fired on the software that you have. These were all shorts. The great thing about these shorts and this short and this short, when you're in a hard downtrend and your oscillator is bearish also, you get double confirmation that this market's going lower. So not only do you have a gap between supply and demand that tells you I have no underlying support according to this indicator, according to volume in the past, and I got under, no underlying demand here, the market likes to accelerate. So this market had a gap between 89 all the way down to 63. So you have 25 S&P point potential between this gap. This gap was 45 and 3 quarters down to 43. Or 46, I'm sorry. You have 43 S&P point potential on this trade. And you can see how price likes to accelerate when you're in these gaps. So when you get into these levels, when you get into these levels, it's always nice to see where the gaps are and so on because it lets you know where price can accelerate through. Now what you can do then is you can 
once you understand these gaps, you can use the uh, ATR trail This is a 20 chart. This is a 20th or 28 ATR trail. But you could use it to trail price. All right, you could use it to trail price. So these were all sell setups at this level yesterday. There, 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 and so on. So you can use the ATR trail to trail price. And that's something that we went over in our conference calls, how you can use Strategy Analyzer to do that and find out the specific, I <clears throat> did a, um, we did market replay already, a video of market replay, how to replay. And then we also did yeah, Strategy Analyzer, how to run Strategy Analyzer. We'll do a recap on that tomorrow real quick. But you can use that as far as that goes. Now, what you can do is you can change your bull bear settings. So let me show you real quick. <clears throat> Currently right now, if you look at, oops, let me get this off here. So currently, I just have in the room, I put a, what, your bull bear at this level, just so you can visually see it when you're manually trading these setups. Bear I put in red, 65, anything below 65 is bearish to me. Anything above 40 is bullish. There's my bear. There's my bull. Oh, it's already on there. So you can see, if I skinny it down, all these were bear sell, sell setups with overall trend direction yesterday. All right. What you can do is on the strategy end of it, right here at this level you can customize where you want your bull bear to come in at so if you want it at 65 anything below 65 as bear you can do that for shorts with with trend or without trend and then anything above 40 you can, you can customize and put your number in uh, your bull bear line is just this oscillator below that you can put in there also. So I went over how to do that on Strategy Analyzer last week. So if you missed that last week, play that video on Strategy Analyzer. I'll recap it tomorrow so you guys understand. But you can use the bull, the bull bear. The bear just means we're looking for shorts with or without trend. Here's a trend filter. And bull means any pullback above 40, we're looking to buy. Any bear below 65, if you have that in there, looking for sells. Or you can customize your own numbers. If you want blow-off rallies, blow-off sell-offs, you're going to use 90 and 10. That means extreme levels. What that would mean would be if I'm in a downtrend, let's say I'm in a downtrend, I'm looking for extreme readings only. I'm looking anything below 10, which is here. See this oscillator below 10. Blow off sell offs or anything above 90. Blow off rally. So I show you how to do how to run strategy analyzer and then also on the videos. And then I show you how to run uh, the market replay. We did that. We took every trade from March the 17th to last week I believe it was or the 24th what I believe it was the 24th or 23rd and I run every trade from 1 30 a.m. to 4 p.m. so play those two videos and then strategy analyzer okay so let's take a look at this morning then what we have if I skinny it down here's this morning's action 
We're a little slow this morning, but you can tell it got below. I mean, we're into that gap. We have a fresh order block right through here. Why is there an order block through there? Look at all the buying that came in at that level. A lot of accumulation. So what it did, it automatically drew that level in. Now we have a fresh demand line at 19 and 3 quarters. If we would ever get through 19 and 3 quarters, back to the downside. If it breaks retest, we get a target of 0.225. So you can see it gives you a level to play off of. So we look for any FZR or momentum trades in that level. Right now the zones are up, so we are moving higher currently. We had a, we've had some buy setups here this morning. But overall, if you look on the hard downtrend, we should roll back over, turn red again. You would you would think because of the hard downtrend for continuation. If that were to happen, you'd want to see your zones turn back to red like this. We're good to go. Let me make one more point before I shut this video off. This comes with the software that we have for you guys. This is a really good read. Once you get, if you are below these three levels, this is with the new update you have. If you're below these three lines, price is below. And it's red. That's the most optimal time to go short the market. Here, all the way down. Look how it stays below all three levels. All three, all the way down. When you get back inside of, I call it the danger zone. When you get back inside the danger zone, above those three, you start closing above it right here. This is where the market starts to get choppy. And you typically have A, a trend change, or B, a sideways market where the trend has dissipated. This is the danger zone. Or chop slash trend change. So when you're running, if you want to run Momo trades according to this methodology and this software and this algorithm, if you want to take the best possible trades that you can possibly get, you want to get yourself in to shallow retracements here all the way down through there when you start yes it can v top in here that's fine it can v top but you don't get a lot of them it usually trend changes i prefer to wait till it gets back inside the best ones you can get when you're below in black space you're below all three all six i'm sorry you're nothing but black space same way to the upside. Today's kind of choppy to the upside, right? However, if you're going to take longs, here's midnight right here. If you're going to take longs, this is a long market right now. It's got to be above all three. You want to stay above any type of retracement level. You get any type of, which we had some momentum setups in here, three of them on the other chart. Once you get into this zone, this danger zone here, the market tends to like to trend change. The probability of success on a momentum trade goes way down. Your success goes down. What you're telling yourself is you're looking for shallow retracements, specifically shallow retracements for momentum. So when you do this, you want to put yourself in a position to win. You want to stay away from the danger zones. It, it, you can get V bottom. This is a V bottom, V top. It does happen. This is a V bottom, V top, where it stops on the outer edge. This is a V bottom, V top for you more experienced traders. If you see a speed bar with a V bottom, but I would only look for it on the outer edge. 
In other words, it has to come right in. It's got to get a bicycle right on this outer edge. You get deep into this zone, it's a, usually a trend change. You will get the V-top, V-bottoms right here where it steps on this outer edge here and then she just rolls over with the speed bar. If you don't even want to play with that, then just wait till you get below all six or above all six. And it's every day like that. This is the best time to look, to look for trend. This is where you want to avoid. See, look right there. See the speed bar? You do get those V-tops with the speed bar. That's the only time I look at it with the speed bar. Other than that, it likes to trend change. I'm trying to help traders to educate them where these stop outs happen. They're right here. That's where the majority of stops out, stop outs will happen when you're in a transition. You want to participate in this. This is what we want to participate in. Right there. Now, like I said, with the speed bar on this other outer edge, it does happen. This is a deep, deep retracement. This is a viable trade, but be aware, it's only on this outer edge. I just showed you three of them in a row with the speed bar. I like the speed bars that come and, come and happen on the shallow retracement. This is the best trade you're going to get in the room because you get a speed bar, meaning you're catching rolling position traders out of shallow retracement, and you'll get price just explode. Look at the acceleration of, of price. So what we want to try to do then, we want to try to get in here and stay below these three. All right? So today, if we start closing below this zone, it's sort of slow today, but if we start closing below the zone, heads up for a trend change. If we, if we break below here, look for a red, we should test these lows. We should come down to 05 if we break 30. We break 30, 32, we should come down and test 05 today. All right, if it wants to go higher, we do want to go higher. You know, you got a 62% retracement up here at 67 to 70 if we want to start moving higher. But normally, if you have a hard downtrend, they'll like to bring it up some, break the low again, and then test the lows. So if we do get a red reversal, if we do get below the zone, we start getting in this danger zone. I would sit, I'd wait, let it break, and see if we can get moving to the other side. All right, that's a really good way to do it. Now, you can do it with the software that you have already. This is the Wave software. You have this software. Okay, the Wave software you do have. You can uncheck tweezer trades and take retracement trades in shallow retracements. Let's say you just want to run shallow retracements. This has done well this week already. Obviously, past performance is not, is not indicative of future results. You do have this software in your hands right now, the wave strategy. So it's done well so far. This week, if you uncheck tweezer trade and just take retracement trades by using a shallow retracement, what I have in here, if you want to look at it, I have a 32 and 30 retracement as my 32 is my ATR length and my 30 as my second ATR length. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just look for shallow retracements with trend for, for blow off trades to the upside downside. Now, if you look at the, um, this is without runners attached. This is just scalping the market. But you can have runners attached to this where you can have, this is a, obviously, this is a big blow-off sell-off. I mean, this is below 10. This is a huge sell yesterday, according to my methodology. This was a blow-off sell-off because you are, below 10 on the bear you can see if you have a runner that runs obviously produce some pretty good results for you but you can uh, you have the software available already 
to you if you want to look at looking at uh, unchecked tweezer and look at shallow retracement trades. All right, you can do that manually too. I gave a video on how to trade the NASDAQ futures manually. So the NASDAQ futures manually, if you want to find the best available trade on the NASDAQ futures, then you want to stay above or below that shallow retracement. So when you're taking trades, you can set this up also, the zone trader. And here's a trade you can take. So this is just a one, I, think I put this to higher, a higher level that I'd like to look at. I use a 125.25 on the NASDAQ futures. 120 is a little too fast. But here I have a 30. 30, 32, and my outer edge, I have a 38. You can customize your own zones. So what you can do, just like on the S&P here this morning on this last trade, this last trade on the S&P, you can see it was a shallow zone, went to 30, 32, got all targets off here this morning, just happened at uh, 6, 6, 20 this morning. It's trying to do one here also again, if, you, if I get a reversal. So you can see these two trades are viable trades according to shallow retracements if you want to do that manually or in your automation compared to this trade. This trade is a deeper retracement. So this trade is not a viable trade because it starts closing above my shallow zones. So what you can do, whether you use a 120-20, 125-25, this works on the 130-30 also. Let's say you trade the NASDAQ futures and you say, you know what, I just want to look for momentum trades only. Now these arrows automatically fired on this, on this, but you don't even have to even have to fire if your zones are correct and your oscillator below here. I don't have the oscillator on here right now, but you can take bull bears when you are below the shallow zone. If you just want to look for shallow trades only. The best trades you're going to get are the trades that don't even come up to this 38. It stays below 30, 32. That's the best momentum you're going to get as far as the wave trader zones. All right. So here, another great trade. This is a beautiful trade. I would this fired on the indicator that you guys have in your hands. <clears throat> it came out to the outer edge of 38. I wouldn't let it go above 38 like this, or you start getting strong price action. So if you look at the difference between that trade right here, it's right on the outer zone. That's a good trade. This trade, great trade, right on the outer zone. I mean, it's right on the inner. This is even better than this one because you got momentum, shallow retracement. Where you get out on the outer zone is this. The outer zone, you're getting hit. This, uh, I have this trading on a smaller time frame. That's why you see these. But you look at this, this is not a trade because it got, it's closing outside of the zone. It's not getting you a reversal. So you can use, you can dictate on your indicator and algo, you can customize your zone. So what I'm trying to show you, which I'm going to show you in the conference call tomorrow, is shallow retracement zones are momentum trades. As long as you stay above 30, 32, or maximum 38 retracement. All right, so when I'm, when I'm doing trades like that, like I said, so if I do trades like this, you know, you want to see trades that stay at the maximum. I mean, you don't want to see it break the maximum of 38 if you're looking for retracement trading. Now, if you want to match it up, let's say you want a stronger filter. You say, you know what, I just don't want the zone to match up, and I'm going to go over this tomorrow. So let's say you have a 30-32 zone here, maximum 38 zone. I have the indicator on here twice. I have 30, 32, 
I got 38. And you go, you know what? I want this not to only match up, but I want it to be above 40 bull. You can do that. You can do it where, let's say you manually want to get into these NASDAQ futures or the S&P. You can make sure you're above 40 and above the shallow retracement. That is the ultimate setting because you're getting a shallow retracement above 30, 32 retracement, and you're getting a bull reading on the oscillator. Okay, let's, let's take a look at some here. So when you have both, when they both match up, it's here. So now I my my 30, 32 retracement, and this is a like I said on the Nasdaq futures is a little uh, whoops. Oh, this is ES. I'm sorry. ES is this is a 125.25 on the ES. But if you look, I am below my oscillator is below 10. I am below my shallow retracements at 30.32, and I get the air to fire there, which is a perfect. This is the perfect cell. This is perfect alignment. This is what you want. If you want to strictly have, if you want to strictly look for momentum trading. The oscillator is an extreme reading with below 3032. That's your most ideal setting. If you look for here, here, two back-to-back -back cells. This one, you're below your zone with an oscillator below 65 is great. This one, it got higher. That's why this didn't take a sell. But it's still below the zone. So you, you can take these trades if you're still below 30, 32 zone without the oscillator. They still work out. But what I'm saying is if you want an extra filter to give yourself more reliability on the setup, the oscillator, when you match it up, with it, you're good to go. Okay? So just something for you guys to, uh, you can customize your own settings. So when I get this out to you, and I get these levels out to you guys, and these indicators and strategies, and you can customize your bull bear, you can customize however your trading style dictates, whether it be a scalper, position trader, or what have you. We don't lock you in saying, hey, the settings I send you out are the best settings. You can find probably settings that fit to your trading style better than what I get out to you. I just, I'm telling you, if you want to just look for momentum, then you can put in those settings of shallow retracements and looking for momentum only because it gives you rules. Like if I want to just trade the uh, NASDAQ futures all day and I just want to trade this chart and I just want to trade off the 125.25, right? And I just want to take trades all day long then what I could do is I could not take these trades up here that exceed the zone. Then what I'll do, if I want to have really tight rules, then I'll just take trades that come up to the zone or are below the zone, the shallow retracements, and only take those trades and not take any other trades. Because then you're putting yourself in high momentum situations the highest probability situations you can possibly get. So when, when we get all this stuff out to you, all this software, and I guess when we, and I, I do uh, with the software that Gerald's uh, updating for you guys, you know, it will have a PDF with it. I almost got like 50 charts. I got 40, I'll see how many charts I have now. I believe I have like 40 some done, 42, 43. I'm gonna get 50, 55 charts done uh, while he's wrapping this thing maybe 60 charts. I got tons of examples to show you on how you can change the parameters to fit your style of trading. 